Hey everybody, I wasn't intending to make a video today and my puppets have the day off, but I'm busting to share a couple things, so here it goes. Now, to recap yesterday's video on reading three card lines, I read them in one of two ways, either sequentially as a sentence or descriptively, often with a focus card. Now, if you recall in uh, the three card video, the descriptive reading I did was for my dog Beaker and I asked what is Beaker's favorite pastime? And I used a center card focus here. So there's our center card, the birds. The answer was his favorite pastime is being part of the everyday chaos and excitement in an adventurous and yet healthy and grounded way. Now, what I didn't mention yesterday was reading uh, a three card line for past, present, future. And that's because I really never do. So I didn't even think of it, but I know some of you do. So what I did is I performed one just a moment ago and I wanted to share it with you. Now hang on, I'm gonna show you. Did I, wait, did I show you the deck I was using there? Okay, hang on, hang on. This, wait a minute. <laughs> These cards here are mm -hmm, the 1889 Lenormand. Okay, I'll use more of those in a moment. These cards, came in a plain white box, but I wrote the name. When you get those plain white boxes, do yourself a favor and write the names of the deck on there, because you won't remember. Anyway, the, these are Sweet and Pastel by R. Williams. Okay, so what I did is, like I said, I wanted to give you a, a past, present, future three card example. So. I asked, show me how my interpersonal skills are developing throughout my lifetime. And I thought that was a really nice general question where only having a single card in each position would still give me enough information. And it came out perfect because it's, it's so true. All right, in the past I got the ship. How did I interact with people in the past? I felt distant and, or I was distant from people and I really felt foreign. I felt foreign with people I didn't know, um, and that was very true. Now, for my present, I got the book, and I am still a very private person, but now I view interactions with other people as opportunities to learn from them and grow. And I ask lots of questions, and I, I have a genuine interest in learning from others. So that is very appropriate for where I'm at right now. But my future card is the kicker because this just gave me goosebumps because it looks like in the future, I'll continue to open my heart more fully to people. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna be full of love and become a, a mother, a mother Teresa or something. No, but you know what I mean. No, that's a great card to get in that position. So I love that. So there's an example of a three card past, present, future, should you choose to do those now. Let's get right into five card readings. All right, what I want, this is again pretty and pastel, or sweet and pastel. All right, so I read five card lines the same way I read three card lines, but I wanted to point out how the readings are gonna start changing as you add more cards. So now this is a sequential reading. Like I said, I read them the same way, the lines, so you're either going to have a sequential reading or descriptive reading. So this is, whoops, this is a sequential reading. And I asked how will my husband's upcoming, oh wow, what kind of bird was that? I asked how my husband's upcoming um, business trip is going to go. And you know, I, his card naturally fell in there. I didn't, you know, pre-select that in any way. All right, so what we can say is that the, the trip is gonna start out with a challenge of some sort, uh, possibly a delay, you know, probably at the airport. But his position is really important here. It gives you a lot of information because he lands on the other side of the mountain. So obviously he, he conquers the challenge. He gets over the mountain because here he is. You know, if he was on the other side of the mountain, that would not be so good. But he, he li lands on the, the, um, the downside here, on, on the, the forward side of, of the mountain. So that's good. Now, oh, you know what? Wait, hang on. I'm sorry. Bloop. I put them, I put them wrong. This is how they fell. Sorry about that. All right. So next we have the house 
and the tower. And this is really important because we're going from small to bigger. And yes, size matters. So what we can say is that he's, he's bringing his, his small ideas, what he thinks are small ideas, from his home office to the corporate office, right? And here we have, um, you know, he's bringing them up to the, to the big wigs, all right? So the tower card gives us judgments and restrictions and, and possibly power struggles, right? Because, you know, he's down here and the guys he's presenting to are up here, right? So that makes perfect sense. But then the final card shows doors opening, solutions being found and success. So that, that I mean, look, we start with the mountain, we end with the key. So that is a, a perfect, um, a perfect sequence of events that it will take place going from bad to good. So that's perfect. So that's an example of a sequential five card line. Now we're back to the 1889 Lenormand because this reading I just laid moments ago as well. And this one I have a lot to say about because my question was, uh, what will the cat or what are the characteristics of my new client? Okay, so I'm asking about her characteristics, personality, physical, what have you. Now, I pre-selected this card. I know she's a woman, so I just stuck it there. Now, when you pre-select a card, you're not really reading it. It's just a focal point. It's, it's like a, a placeholder. You know, you can't, you can't give this card meaning because you put it there. I mean, that would be like asking what will happen today and just laying out all your favorite cards and saying yeehaw. Wouldn't that be great? Anyway, so we're not really reading this card at all. Now, why do I offset these cards? I always do this when I have a pre-selected um, focal or focus card, because that that just reminds me that I'm not really reading that card. All right, and because also because this is a descriptive reading, now that we're getting into five card lines, I I do tend to mirror the cards. All right, so. What can we say about her? Well, we, ha whoops, we have um, letter over here. So she'll be communicative, she'll be well-spoken. Now we have the mountain. And notice these cards are the closest to her. So these are the most important cards, okay? The mountain tells me she'll be headstrong. Um, she may be challenging to deal with. She's going to be persistent. And she's possibly going to be stubborn, All right? So, Anchor on the other side of her tells me she's going to be stable and strong and unwavering and, you know, goal oriented. But when you look at these two cards together, you know, she's, she's set in her ways, right? And she is going to be headstrong and she is going to be stubborn. She's, you're not going to budge her. She's got her anchor down, right? And the book tells me she'll be knowledgeable, she'll be sure of what she knows, um, and probably a bit of a closed book, especially since we have Mountain right next to her, okay? So that really brings in the full meaning of this card. Now, I wanted to show you how this changes because I then took her out and I asked for a center card for this same reading and I got the house. And I wanted to point out how much more information you now get when you don't have a pre-selected card. Because the center card, when it's not pre-selected, is the primary card in the reading. So what does the house tell us about her? She's gonna be conservative and traditional, but also private. Because look at these other cards we have, right? We also have the mountain and we have the book. So you're looking for connections among these cards. So this tells me she is going to be private and, um, you know, headstrong and uh, a closed book and all of that. So that is an example of a descriptive five card with and without a pre-selected uh, center card. So lastly, right? Yeah, okay. Lastly, I'm going to use the, can you see that? The Stralsunder Lenormand deck. These are all mini decks, by the way. If you're wondering why they look so tiny under my big gnarly animal hands, <laughs> animal worker hands. 
All right, so let me just lay these out so you can see them. Oh, hang on. I might have to, wait, let me, there we go. Okay. Okay, all right, is that good? Okay, so now I'm really excited about this reading because now we're getting into vertical interactions, which um, is the next step and in your reading education. And, you know, once you, you get the hang of vertical interactions, the next step is the box spread, and then after that we have the grand tableau. Yay! So, what was the question for this? The question I asked for this reading is um, wait, how will the search for our new mountain home go this year? And the positions, the meanings that I assign to the positions are as followings, because when you do a crossbred, you can assign different meanings to these positions. So I chose the center guard card to be the heart of the matter. The card to the left is the inauspicious card or what will be you know more difficult for us the card to the right is the auspicious card what will be easier for us this is what is under our control this is what is out of our control so what can we say from these cards well this is great information because that anchor as the heart of the matter tells me that the search will be steady, it'll be dependable, it'll be consistent, and we'll maintain our determination throughout this search process. We could even say that we'll reach our goal and we'll be dropping our anchor in a new place. So when I see this as the heart of the matter for this particular question, I right away I think, well, it looks like we will reach our goal. But I just asked how the search will go, so I can't, I can't say that for sure yet. Now, what is weighing down on us? What is out of our control? Well, we got the burden card, we got the cross. So yeah, it's, it's an arduous task to find a new home. So that did not surprise me at all. Now what's under our control? We got the book. So we're going to have access to information about all the properties. We're going to have access to knowledgeable realtors also. And we already decided we're going to contact several realtors and, you know, let the best man win kind of thing. Um, now, this would not be secrets here because in this position, this is what's under our control. This is what we're standing on. We can't say we're, we're in control of what we don't know. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So you have to fit the meaning to the, to the question, to the position, all right? Um, now, what is going to be hard for us? This actually is a great card to have in that inauspicious position because it's the ways. It's telling me that what's going to be hard for us is making a choice and that tells me that we're going to have more than one choice and we're probably going to have at least two really great options to pick from. So that's a great card to get in an inauspicious position. And then, <laughs> sounds like a what is that? Anyway, um, I'm listening to birds, <laughs> bird bird sounds from the uh, from the Amazon. Okay, so what is auspicious is the tree. So what this tells me is this is a time card, right? This is a card of patience and slow movement. So what is going to be easy for us? Well, we have time. We don't have to move this year. We simply want to. So we're not under any pressure. But the tree in this position is also really cool because we're looking for a home in the mountains and I'm, I'm obsessed with trees. So what are we going to find? We're going to find lots of trees. I mean, I am purposefully looking for a home where no matter what window I look out of, I don't see anything but trees. And that's what I keep saying to my husband, as long as I don't see a thing but trees when I look out that window, that's what I'm looking for. So it's funny that that came up. But that also tells me that um, we may just find the perfect, you know, wooded natural property where we're going to put down roots and stay for a long time, possibly indefinitely, you know, for the rest of our lives. This might be our retirement home. Okay, so that's it. There's... Um, 
uh, different ways to read a five card line or a five, uh, five card reading. This is not a line and a little introduction to vertical interactions. So the, uh, the next video will be on the box spread. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.